Mark chapter 10, verse 46. <clears throat> and it came to Jericho, and in Jericho is a cursed city, Joshua chapter 6. Joshua curses the city to be built, and then later on it was built. And it's here now, and it's cursed. They came to Jericho as he went out of Jericho. So, the main phrase is, this, not, this next part of the story, they're not in Jericho. They came and went out of that cursed city with his disciples and a great number of people. Blind Barimaeus, the son of Tantheus, sat by the highway side begging. That's what a lot of people who were blind, who, who had physical ailments, they would they would be in the areas of, of the of the Bible lands and they would beg. That was their livelihood. And they trusted on other people helping them out. And this kind of begging, uh, maybe they would have some shysters. But here in Daytona Beach, we got people who panhandle on the side of the road and listen, <clears throat> They're, they're poor and that because of drugs. They may not be poor. They may be loaded with money. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, I mean, there's a great commotion of people, and he can't see, but he can hear. And, you know, it's Jesus, and they're talking about Jesus, and Jesus that and Jesus this and, and he's asking the people well, what's the commotion or well, what's the uproar he began to cry out and say Jesus thou son of David have mercy on me now that Phoenician woman the Gentile had the same kind of thing and he would not answer her because she was a Gentile Barimaeus is a Jew calling upon the Jewish title, son of David, Judah, the king, Matthew. And Jesus is going to answer him because he's Jewish. This is not, though it is a title of Jesus, it is not a Gentile title. It's not a Christian title for Jesus. Nowhere is Jesus the king of the church. And yet in the millennium, he's going to be king over the kings, which is the, the Christians, king of kings, because the Bible says we shall be kings. Right now, we are priests. And under the theopoly of Israel before they wanted a king there was a it was a priest class of people there was no king it was if you hate it it was a church state system God spoke to the nation God spoke to the priest everything was given to the priest tithes were given to the priest not your preacher the temple, the tabernacle, was the building directed by God of the priests doing their functions, not your church building. Have mercy on me. And that's a proper call to call upon mercy. We can do that in the church age. Mercy. Many charge him that he should hold his peace reverently to say, shut up. Be quiet. But he cried the more a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Now, blind Barimaeus pictures a street preacher on the side of the road 
calling out to Jesus. I know because I was a street preacher before my health went. And I would lift up the name of Jesus, not Son of David, but I would lift up the name of Jesus. I would preach the gospel. And people, including Christians, would say, Shut up! You're driving people away. That's not what I would do. I let my light line shut up. That's not what my pastor does. Why don't you just go somewhere else? Why don't you keep it? Shut up! We don't want to hear about Jesus. Same thing here with my Bartimaeus. Tell him, shut up! You just go back over here and just, just shut up. Let's hurry up and get Jesus through this. Please. Get him out of here. But he didn't shut up. And neither should Christians. And Jesus stood still. Now here right now he's walking with the group. He's got his disciples. He's got his group, group of people. Great group of people. He, he's a, then he stops. Then he stops. Had Barmez never cried out, Jesus, thou son of David. Jesus would never stop. And there are people who there are people who say, how come Jesus didn't do nothing for me? Because he never called upon me. The disciples were in the boat. You know, we know that Jesus was walking on the sea. And the Bible says, one of the gospels says, he would just kept on walking by. And let's just say, us. On the road to Emmaus, the, the two men there, and they're headed into the house, and Jesus would have made it. He's going to keep on going. Wait a minute, why don't you come down with us? He would have kept on going if he didn't invite him. Jesus is not walking into the church today unless you open the door. I mean, I know we use that as a verse for you know, for, for the loss and trying to... Well, that verse is for the thief. If, if, if Mary and Martha had never sent for Jesus, he would never have been in the graveyard for Lazarus. If they would never cried out to Jesus at, at, at the wedding of Canaan, he would never have made a war to one. And there are many issues in the life of Jesus we read that he is going about his life. He's going about to Jerusalem. Three and a half years. And there are times that he stops. Because someone reached someone reached out and said, Jesus. And he stood still and commanded him to be called. That would be Barnabas. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise. He calls it. So he's still sitting. And there's such a commotion of people. Blind Barmaeus did not know about Jesus stopping and calling. He had to be told by others. And there are many people out there, they don't know what Jesus has done for them, what Jesus will do for them, unless you tell them. About Jesus in the cross. And you can't put the assumption. I know this is not the church age. But they didn't tell blind bar man. Will you come to church? Will you come to temple? It's not the issue. The church. And the temple is not. 
standing there calling out to blind Bartimaeus. Jesus is standing there calling to him. And we run to another issue. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. They could say, hey, Bartimaeus, Jesus is standing there. He's waiting. Ah. Never mind. I don't want to bother him. He could have made any excuse. And people do. It's sad. Somebody, and they don't want Jesus. They want that other Jesus that Paul preached about. They want the Mary Jesus. They want the Pope Jesus. They want the other Jesus that came to North America. They don't want the holy, righteous Son of God. And he would still need guidance to Jesus because he can't see. And somebody will have to bring this blind man to that one man in the entire crowd of all the different worldly religions and all the different gods of all the world, especially with India. You got to pick up that, you know, we, we, we sing, you know, Amazing Grace, I was blind, now I see. That's all, I think, John chapter 6, I believe it was. And we don't grab that blind man and hold his hand and say, come, let me bring you to Jesus. He's over here. And that blind man gets up and he starts talking. No, 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 I mean, excuse me, sir. That's Allah. He can't do nothing for you. No, no, excuse me, sir. Get up. Don't bow down before the Pope. That's not Jesus. He's over here. No, excuse me, sir. That educator is not the one. No, sorry, sir. That's America. That's not the Savior. And the Republican, that's not. No, Jesus is over. It's our job to bring that blind man to Jesus. He's standing there. He wants that man to come. He's not willing that any should perish. And blind Bartimaeus is not brought to church. He's brought to Jesus. Because <clears throat> in that crowd of people, there's all kinds of saviors. There's all kinds of gods. There's all kinds of religion. you got to bring him to Jesus. And Jesus answered, said unto him, What will thou I should do unto thee? And a blind said unto him, Lord, that I might see receive my sight. I'm blind. I'm not asking for money, silver, and gold. I'm not asking for world peace. Not asking for, for you know, the, the great church. I want to receive my sight. And I want to see you. I don't know how long this man has been blind. If he's, How much of a blind he is. Because some, you know, some can see shadows and something like that. But the very fact is, the very first thing now he's going to see if not the longest time or whatever time, if not for ever since he began life in this world, the moment is now, his eyes are going to be open and he's going to see Jesus. Someone had to tell him Jesus was there or it could have just been a commotion. What's the commotion? Well, it's a, it, 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 it's a Baptist fellowship. What's a commotion? It's a Christian movie name. What's the commotion? 
Oh, we're, we're going to vote on church bylaws. What's the commotion? It, it's it's a big mar Mary parade. Right? When I grew up in the one of the Catholic Church, they would pray Mary statue around, and they stick money to it. Right? What's the big commotion be, being over the Middle East? It, it, it's it's the ones that, uh, worshiping Baal and worshiping other gods. Someone had to tell them. It is Jesus. It's the son of Nazareth. I mean, it's Jesus, the son of David, of Nazareth. He had to learn that. He had to know that. For a Jewish man, before the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, you couldn't tell this blind man, now believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, now shall be saved. That's not the answer. You can't tell me this man will be a Christian because there are no Christians yet. And Jesus said to them, now watch what Jesus says to him. Go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. All right, here's your eyesight. Now go your way. That's what happens in the church today. They come to that church altar, they leave that church altar, and they never see them again. They went their way. Are they saved? I'm not going to say if they're saved or not. That's between them and God. But we're not talking about the church. Jesus said, go thy way. Here you go. Here you guys say, go. And immediately he received his sight. And followed Jesus in the way. He didn't go his way. He went the way of Jesus. Uh, as a matter of fact is, he really didn't listen to Jesus. Jesus said, okay, go your way. He said, okay, I can see. And he followed Jesus. And, but we're never told how far he follows Jesus. Is he there at the cross? Is he there at the at the tomb? Does he ever see the resurrected Christ? He got his sight. That's beyond shadow of a doubt. Salvation beyond shadow. If you got the salvation of God by Jesus Christ alone, you're saved. You can't lose it. And there are some people, they'll go their way. There are some people who will go the way of Jesus. And then they'll go whatever way. There's so many aspects. Of following Jesus. Don't set your course. Of following Jesus for somebody. Because that's not the way of Jesus. And that's not their way of Jesus. I would be in great air if I would take, you know, street preach. Never mind door knocking or anything. I, I'd be in great air. I, when I see on Facebook and I see somebody going out there, I, my prayer is if they got the gospel of Jesus Christ and they are witnessing to what the Bible tells them to witness for salvation alone, Lord bless whatever they're doing and however they're doing. And let these people, let their eyes be open. Because the next great event in the world, in the world, not Christianity, in the world is a great 
darkness of blindness coming through the Antichrist. Holy Spirit's going. The Christians are going. The blind Gentiles will be about their way. It's a time of Jacob's trouble. Don't watch these movies and how the Gentiles can be saved. That's not how the Gentiles get saved. Jesus tells us Gentiles get saved with their conduct with Israel. And they don't even know what they're doing. And the eyes of Israel, the blind Barimaeus, the son of David, Matthew, the son of Nazareth, Israel, with 144,000, not Jesus, a great number of people, 144,000, going out, preaching, and teaching the Jews like blind Barmaid. And some are going to wood to see Jesus. And some won't. 